Tushar Pradhan is our market master today. He's chief investment officer at HSBC Global Asset Management India. Tushar, great to have you with us here on the program. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so, you know, the, uh, the global stuff is kind of impacting us to a much lesser degree. Uh, and as time has go uh, gone on, uh, the level of bearishness as far as just purely U.S. is also starting to come off. You know, how much more will people sell, even at U.S. stocks? So does that open up a window for a clean run of outperformance here? If uh, U.S. starts to uh, sort of behave itself, maybe goes into a bit of a time correction and no great price damage from here, what's your sense? Yeah, I think interesting points you make there. Uh, but you have to remember that the U.S. has had a very significant drawdown. Uh, we don't notice it because our markets have not fallen so much. But if you look at the damage in the, the U.S., uh, NASDAQ especially, you will find that there is significant correction in the stock markets. Uh, and to say that the U.S. markets were time correct from here, I would actually argue that they might bounce back because the steepness of that correction is so, so large. I think what we are all waiting for is uh, some cue from the Federal Reserve that maybe the inflation number is speaking that they have probably had victory over it. And they will now start to look at the prospect of slowing industrial production. And possibly the number they're also looking at is increasing unemployment. Once that starts to happen, I think the Federal Reserve will definitely need to cut rates. And the cutting cycle, clearly, as we all know, is very, very positive from an assets uh, valuation perspective. So I think uh, what I think from here on could be is that the U.S. will also bounce back. But the timing, of course, is something that we don't know. And once that starts to happen, obviously, that has a pretty good impact across uh, all markets. And I think our markets will also benefit from there. Uh, so I think very interesting times ahead of us. Okay, interesting times and good times, it seems like, because the Nifty is now surging ahead, 160 points higher on the Nifty. The Bank Nifty is up 320 points and it's a 1% rally almost on the index right now. Led by a lot of these IT names, Wipro is now up almost 2%. Uh, TVS Motor, we were telling you about that earlier, a double upgrade over there in the last two days. Uh, two upgrades rather, so 2% higher on TVS Motors. Zomato is making a bit of a comeback. Adani Power is in the green, so plenty of stocks uh, to look at. Tishar, uh, good morning and uh, greetings of the season to you and your entire team at HSBC. This has been a good one. Uh, you know, it's a comeback after COVID and uh, a lot of retail, invest retail participation is back as well. Uh, wanted your thoughts on how you've read into earnings season so far. It's early days yet, but good numbers coming through from banks, not so bad from IT. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I think uh, we have been predicting pretty significant earnings growth for this quarter as well, and in fact, for the full financial year. Uh, so I think the uh, dark clouds that we have seen in the Western world and the markets as we speak have caused us to believe that earnings will not follow through. But I think the earnings story is pretty solid for this year. What brings to mind then is that will this be followed up for next year? And I think that is really where the confusion is. How long will the higher interest rates survive? Will it snuff out the capital expansion that we are talking about, will, which will happen? Or will the rates which have gone up in India not really be so substantial to be able to really snuff out the recovery that we are talking about for next year? So a lot of uncertainties there. Uh, I would place my bets on the fact that if we have growth, then higher interest rates are unlikely to damage our story and which would mean that earnings growth will continue strong into the next year. The other uh, impact that we also have to remember may happen is that if global metals, global materials continue to remain a little subdued because of the lack of demand in the Western world, then in, in some way it benefits India because the import of these metals into the country clearly come at a much more discount. And on the other hand, the consumer discretionary, the, the manufacturing sector then generally does benefit from here also, which also means that earnings can remain in positive territory for quite a few quarters going forward. So I would think that I'm pretty positive on, on earnings growth in India continuing. And this quarter uh, has been a little bit of a surprise only because our uh, vision had changed a little negative. Uh, but in spite of that, I think the, the earnings recovery is likely to sustain in my view. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Tushar. Morning. Uh, if earnings recovery is, uh, you know, going to match up, then the banks need to do well, right? And there's a consensus trade. Here in India, I was looking at the global peers as well. 
there seems to be a bullish sentiment in all these banking names. Overnight, we had Bank of America that came out with a good set of numbers. Uh, but, you know, do you think that since banks are expected to do well, it makes sense now to look at some of those PSU banking names? They've been underperformers. Valuation-wise, they're giving some bit of comfort. And we have a sell-side note today from Haitong uh, Securities. They are positive on it. Your take. Yeah, I think it's it's a matter of choice. I think there is enough in the market to kind of bracket yourself to saying which is the more less risky ride you would like to take. Uh, I will mention only this, that uh, the private sector banks have done well for the reasons that we all know, that they bring technology, they bring ease of banking, ease of business to customers. Customers tend to like that. The kind of expansion that they've seen both on the liability side as well as their ability to attract more customers is the testament for where their market valuation is going. The innovation by which they approach newer customers and the ease at which people can be lent to is something which a lot of the public sector banks need to catch up on. And I think the market is giving it a multiple knowing the inherent strength uh, of these business franchises and not because they are PSUs and they should deserve a little better or anything like that. I think it is just hard fundamentals on which way the market is viewing it. Yes, there is valuation comfort on the public sector side. And in fact, if any significant company turns around, invests dramatically in technology, matches step for step what the private banks have been able to offer its customers, I think you've got a gold mine. But it has to be selective. It has to be management led. It has to be strategy led. And for that, we need to wait and watch which public sector company actually takes that initiative up so but so Tushar, Tushar, sorry to come point. in here i uh, just yeah. wanted to uh, you know confirm that you're in the camp that believes that those psu banks they deserve a second chance right i mean they deserve a look at given the valuations given all that you said i i would say that the valuations clearly point to something which is comparatively attractive that is all i can say however i mentioned that they will remain attractive if they do not do anything about their franchise okay. if they do not take seriously their intent of market entry of their ability to attract more customers if that's not the case the market is not going to reward you just because you're cheap all right uh, you know by the way the nifty is uh, hit its 50 day moving average uh, which is uh, what 17491 the day's high is 17493 uh, so it got to slightly above the 50-day and now it's kind of uh, come off. Uh, so that remains the level to take out as we were highlighting uh, in the morning. So you opened with a flourish right at that level and now just trading under it. Could this be a bit of a, a trending kind of session? We'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, Tushar, uh, IT services is the other one, uh, which uh, again, uh, a lot of debate around that one. Uh, but... Uh, what what would you do there? Would you uh, would you want to get some exposure now? Have you been positive, constructive? Uh, tell us. Yeah, IT has been uh, a little bit under the cloud because of the sentiment, I would think, because everybody expects the US to go into some sort of slowdown. And clearly the ordering is a measure of how strong and how uh, positive the US corporations feel about infrastructure, about IT itself. And IT services in India are a clear beneficiary of that thought downstream. Uh, and as a result, the, the clouds around what to expect out of IT services uh, had become a little dark. Uh, but I think we need to also understand that there is a lot of IT infrastructure, which is BAU, which means that it will continue no matter what happens. And the kind of spending that is going to likely come will also you know, continue, which means that the robustness of earnings for IT services especially the larger companies, will sustain. However, the margins, because of what we have seen as wage inflation in India, as well as the fact that the fight for talent, as we call it, has become pretty intense. And the smaller and the mid-sized IT companies are always vulnerable to changes uh, in growth trajectory. So I think one has to look at it a little bit in a nuanced fashion. There are businesses which will sustain this slowdown in the US no matter what, and the earnings will rebound. On the other hand, there will be companies which will have an impact of the slowdown and they will clearly struggle by way of margins as well as the fact that their top lines may not really generate the kind of excitement that some of the other companies will do. So it's not a blanket yes or no, but I think there is enough opportunity for us to poke around. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we will leave it at that. Uh, all the best. Happy Diwali to you. If we don't speak before that, have a great uh, somewhat. And thanks a lot for joining in on CNBC TV 18.